Hey guys, Joey Resendez here. Um, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to talk about a specific piece of repertoire. We might make this in the series. We'll see how it goes. But today I'm going to talk about the Muchinsky saxophone sonata. All right. So I'm going to go through the piece, um, maybe not like measure by measure. That's not my plan, but we'll see how this goes. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to flash some maybe tricky parts on the screen, how I would finger some things. Um, if you don't have the music, please go out and purchase it. Um, and, uh, and you can measure your numbers. I'm going to refer to measure numbers in here. But I'm going to go through maybe some tricky parts, um, maybe how to, to uh, finger some things. This is a really popular um, sonata for students who maybe are uh, freshmen, sophomore in college, maybe some advanced high schoolers. Um, I played this when I think was a sophomore in college. Um, and this is a really good piece if you are just starting to get your feet wet with altissimo. So you have to play altissimo G, G sharp, and A in here. The highest note you have to play is A, so it's not really that bad. Um, but those three altissimo notes tend to be some of the more challenging ones, ironically. So um, the Muczynski Sonata. Robert Muczynski, born 1929, died 2010. So just 10 years ago, he, he passed away. Uh, this was written the same year, actually, as the Denisov Sonata, 1970, which if you compare this piece and the Denisov Sonata, are two vastly different compositions. So I thought that was inter interesting. Uh, it's dedicated to Trent Keniston, who was or who who taught um, saxophone at Western Michigan University, I believe, up in um, Kalamazoo, Michigan. OK, so right off the bat to start, you have Andante Maestoso. Um, Quarter note equals 52, but you need to be thinking eighth notes in here. So 104 is your pulse. So eighth, your eighth notes is your pulse. One and two and three and okay. It's kind of regal, um, almost and mysterious. So I, I really like the the opening to this to this piece. It's really great. Um, so the first thing I would kind of point to um, is the going into measure ten. Um, you might want to use a side D right there. So finger that D, the very first note, with just your E flat key. That's it. No octave key. No anything else. So this is the measure at this is um, the measure after the fermata, so leading into that bar. Okay, I think the the side D really works in that instance right there. Okay. All right. Um, next trouble spot, not really trouble spot, but thing I would kind of point you to point to, to to give you a little guidance here um going to measure 25 okay so this is our first foray into the altissimo register in this composition so you have the e f sharp e g okay so i would just start off here with the front fingerings if you don't know what the front fingerings are so for the e Instead of using the palm keys here, you're going to finger it like a G, but your top finger is going to be up here on the teardrop or front F key or X, or what some people may call it. So it's basically your front key, front F key and then your um, with your index finger and your middle and ring fingers right on the pearls that, that, that they are assigned to. So. so that's a G right there. If you just move it up to the front F key, you're going to get um, an E above that, a sixth above that. So starting right there, I would do all these fingerings with front fingerings, um, all these notes coming up here with front fingerings. So E, F sharp, E, G. So F sharp is going to be played with um, your front F, your index, oh, sorry, your ring finger, and the side B flat. And then the G, which is going to be a front F key with your side B flat and your um, index finger on your left, excuse me, on your right hand, or you can do two. I do two. I think it tunes a little bit better with two, with uh, 
with your index finger and your middle finger. And then going up to the C, I'm sorry, the, the A in the in measure 26, I would just add my my um, side C key to my G fingering. So for that A, this is becoming my go-to A a lot. It's going to be just your front F key, octave, all the autism modes with the octave key, and then your index finger and your first two side keys down here, your B, side B flat and side C key, or T, A, and T, C. So playing that whole passage. Okay. Then moving on, um, I think you could go back to the, your, um, your palm key fingering in measure 27 on the E. And then we have that big, nice run, scalar run, up to the altissimo A in the next measure, measure 28. And this is kind of crazy. <clears throat> so this run always gives me a little bit of fit, some, some fit. So because the way I do it, I play one note with my palm keys, which is the E flat, and the rest are going to be just normal fingers, or the I mean, everything after that E flat is going to be with the front key. So I would just kind of, um, and, and if you notice with the rhythm here, you can have the A and then the seven note is, the, 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 the group of seven is going to take place in one eighth note. So if we're going, so, so I would just kind of practice this as, as kind of a, uh, doing kind of an additive um, exercise. So just kind of add one as you go then if you can um, I would once you get to the E I would go to the front E which is like we what we said before um, uh, front F key one I'm sorry front F key two three in your in your um, left hand And then F sharp, just like we did in the last last uh, two measures ago. Um, uh, front F, two, side B flat. And then for the G, I'm sorry, for the, for the G sharp, I will just lift off two from that F sharp. So, for that G sharp, I would just do front F key and side B flat. That's it. And then for the A, we're going to do the same A that we did um, just a little bit ago. Um, so that'd be front F key. And then I've heard this referred to as the triangle, which is the um, one and then T, A, and T, C, the, first, the, the two side keys on the bottom here. You're going to hit both of those and your um in the, your pointer finger in your right hand that's your a along with the front f key so nice good slow practice there we'll do the trick okay <clears throat> all right going into measure 34 um, I think I played when I played this uh, many years ago that I did these with the um, the side key going into 30 uh, measure 34 with the side D key I'm sorry side D sharp um, in that 5 8 bar <laughs> tone there if you want to play a long D sharp or a or a palm uh, D sharp doing that will be just your um, just your hot your palm F key that's it so it's a little awkward same thing a couple a few measures later um, with the same passage when you go up to a D natural I think that 
that's a good that's a better candidate to uh, to to do those fingerings. So you're starting off slow. I'm sorry, starting off soft right there. You got the crescendo into the low C sharp in measure thirty eight. Good. All right, moving along. Um, you may elect in measure forty and forty one to keep your. Yeah, that's right. 40 and 41 to keep your G sharp key down when you're doing those neighbor tones. There's no really, there's no reason to lift off your G sharp when you're going down to the F sharp because you're going right back up to G sharp. The only thing that, I mean, that, that won't affect anything and it will take care of any blips if you have um, some trouble with that cross fingering. Cross, whenever, when I say cross fingering, I mean fingerings where you are um, going between two notes and you are lifting off keys and depressing keys at the same time. So a, cro uh, a cross fingering would be B to C, or uh, sorry, a B to C, or um, if you're going to F to F sharp, if you're doing a flip flop, anything that flip flops when you're putting, putting down keys and taking off keys um, simultaneously to go between two notes. I like to do that as little as possible. So keeping your G sharp down um, in measure 40, uh, measure 40 and 41 will um, take away that cross string and eliminate any chance of, of, of blips happening as long as your G sharp key is not sticking. Okay, and then going on, uh, we have another altissimal passage going, uh, starting, uh, the, the line starts in measure 42, goes through 43. And I would go to a, I personally would go to a front E there at the, the last um, the last note of measure 42. So front E there, and then going up to a to a F in the, uh, in the starting measure 43. And then for the A flat, um, just your front F key and side B flat. That's a really good um, fingering if you're having to go between a, uh, an F and an altissimo A flat. Okay, and then the same fingering we did earlier for the high G, so that the high G would be the front F key, one here down in the bottom in your right hand, and then side B flat, or you can do two keys there. It makes it a little bit easier that you're crescendoing through there. Okay. And you have this agitato here, which means you, you can get, you can, uh, this starts a little bit faster right here. You can you kind of switch gears a little bit. So, yeah, and then you have that throughout. Then you have a tempo primo, ma poco meno muscle. So it's uh, basically a tempo may be a little bit slower here after your fermata in measure 51, okay? And then um, you may elect to do side fingerings here, like on the last note and maybe um, in the in measure 54 um, on the D sharps, but you know, you come in from a high, from a F sharp um, in measure, this is the very end, F sharp D, uh, sorry, F sharp D sharp, I think you can make either one sound just fine. Um, just I back then, twenty years ago, I probably would have used the the the, the short fingering, but I think um, I'm a little bit older now. I think I can I can taper that that middle D sharp, keep it in tune, just as easy with the with the with the the long fingering. It sounds a little bit fuller. All right, going on, second movement. This one's quite a bit quicker. Uh, chord on equals 144 to 150. Um, I would, you know, obviously do slow practice on this. Um, the first 
um, thing I'm going to talk about here, like I said, it's not my goal to go through every single measure. This is kind of just a kind of an overview on things that I would do here. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about here is, is measure 17. Um, you got the you're going down to the high G flat over from measure 16, and then you start on the high G flat. I would do uh, the palm key fingerings here. G flat is an enharmonic to F sharp. Got the F flat, which is um, enharmonic to E natural. And you got the forte piano on the two C's um, that go in measure 18. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to play the first one loud, the second one soft. Yeah. Measure 22, I would do the palm keys. I'm sorry. Yes, I would do the palm keys here, um, going and doing these um, these grace notes. I think maybe back then I may have done the the um, the front key, but I don't, I don't think that's a great idea. No, I I would just do a palm key here, and then over here you don't really have much of a choice. You have to use the front keys here because you got the G coming up. crescendo down to that low C there okay um, and you have more of this mel or not melody make secondary melody here in measure 32 uh, 42 um, got this run going up to the altissimo G this is another one of those great moments where you know you get to bridge the gap between your normal register and the altissimo register okay and just same fingerings as earlier. I would I would do the the front fingerings here on um, starting with the E, the, the 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 high E there, E F and then G. Be sure not to um, accent each one of those quarter note triplets there. I hear a lot of people going So keep those really long. I think I like the way I, I like the, um, the 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 length of those. Keeping those long, it kind of contrasts with the character of the piece. It's really kind of kind of nice. Okay. All right, moving along. Um, uh, let's see here. Another high G, another altissimo moment here. Going coming after sixty two. This is going to be um, measure sixty two, sixty six, four, seven. Measure sixty six. Yeah, so going there, measure sixty six. You got the high G. Um, again, you're gonna go with the front fingerings. The the thing I would practice most is just those first three notes. Uh, da da da. So you got the G F E flat. Once you get to that E flat, you're kind of home free with your notes here. So bridging that gap between the front F and the E flat. Um, and and once you get that clean. You're home free going down um, for the rest of that um, that uh, that run. The hardest part is 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 bridging the gap between those two registers. So, and I really think that the um, that the front F is kind of part of the the autism origin. Now it's not autism note, but it does kind of bridge the gap. It's kind of one of those bridge notes along with um, F uh, palm. I'm sorry. Uh, um, front F, front F sharp, those notes there. Yep. So, they're going on after measure seventy-two. We got these. Um, we got these runs here. Um, after measure seventy-six, seventy-six, seventy-seven, seventy-eight, seventy-nine. Um, I think I may have played these with the palm with the front key, but that's I, I look back right now. I have this is my music back from you know twenty years ago, and I have I am going to erase um, use the front fingerings here because that is just silly. Use the palm keys. Yeah, so I think we uh, a saxophone players are really kind of we jump to the to the front keys as much as we can. Um, 
And while those notes can sound really great um, and they come out kind of e really easy um, and there's an easy fingering, I don't know if it's, it's not always the best sounding option. Um, and especially if you have to go between, um, between like, like for instance, right here, measure 79, um, you got the F to E flat back to F and then the G flat. You don't want to be going F to E flat to F going between, you know, the palm key and the, and the front key. You just want to keep it all the same. So I would go palm keys all the way there. Okay. Um, make sure your accents are great here after measure 83, 80, 45, measure 86. Okay. Great. And then, oh. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, measure 84, um, there's a string of 16th notes there that are not under a slur, but I would slur them anyway. I, I just think it sounds better to slur those that if you tongue them, all those notes right there, it's, it's kind of, it sounds out of place. Uh, I think just the slur would, would sound it will sound will will make that all sound just kind of the same and 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 it just sounds better i don't know how that tonguing all of those just is a little bit silly i just wouldn't do it myself even though i have heard um at least one commercial recording that does that and i, I heard it and i was like I'm not sure i agree with that but anyway um let's see here uh measure 108 measure 109 this is what we call, see if it was this scale right here, this is what we call an octatonic or diminished scale. And what this is, is a scale that consists of whole steps and half steps, which alternate. Okay, so you have right here, you're starting with the, with the G, um, G, A, that's a whole step, B flat, half, and then another whole step. It, anyway, you get the picture. It just repeats um, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, and that creates an eight note scale. Okay, slow practice will get you up to that high G. You gotta bridge the gap there with your F flat, which is gonna be your palm E. Got the E flat, and then you gotta be quick to get on up to the to those um the, the front key. up to the G like we've been fingering all along. All right. Next little passage here, measure 116. Got starting off with that high G sharp up there. I'll, I'm going to start over here at 114. Um, you, the, the G sharp I use there is the, the one we've been doing, which is going to be the front key plus your um, front key and side B flat only. It's not the most reliable fingering, but it's gonna it's gonna be the best one to go to the to the F sharp that comes right after it, which will you will just add your middle finger in your left hand. Reads a little hard. Oh yeah, and then after there. Measure 116, 17. The end of measure 117, you have the G sharp with the octave key down to low C sharp. I would just do um, this, uh, I would play that G sharp with my low C sharp key so I don't have to pick up my pinky going down to the low C sharp. All right. Um, we have more of the same music that we played earlier, um, starting over here at measure 133. We got the same, you know, scale passage going up to the high G in measure 140. Okay, and then we have this uh, 6H section, which is kind of a um, cool little coda to this to this, to this piece. And what this is is this is really kind of a 
Um, you'll see sometimes in music, you'll see listesso tempo. I kind of think of it as listesso pulse. So the pulse stays the same. So you got one and two and one and two and one. And you got to two, four and you got the six, eight. One and two and one and two and one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the pulse stays the same. It's the division of that pulse which changes. We're going from a duple to a triple meter. One and two and one and two and one, two, three, 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 one. Make sure you get your accents here. Luckily, they don't fall into weird of a places. Um. Okay. And then we have some altissimo stuff. Now, it gets a little bit trickier here when we're going at a faster clip here. Um, when we're going throughout these, these altissimo passages. Um, so starting after measure 163, a few bars. This is um, measures... Uh, one uh, 171 i'm sorry um 160 man, sorry 170 171 so you got the g um g to f and then back up to g again and measure 171 okay and then uh measure 172 this is another one of those, this, this A fingering I love. Um, it's the same one we'll be doing, but I'm gonna show you again. Front F and then first finger in your right hand and then the two, um, your, the, the bottom two uh, side keys here, your, your side B flat and side C. And it's really nice because you can just slur right on, right on up from that, from that C sharp. And then, Going down to the G, just take off the side C key. Okay. Um, going on 184, measure 185. Same, same deal right there. And then you got the seven right here. That's all gonna be in one beat. Ba -ba 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 Make sure you land right there on the on the A on round count one. Um, measure one eighty seven. Uh, still front fingerings there. And same fingers that we've been doing all along. This is the second to last bar. You got the E flat to F. That's where you're going to bridge that, the, the, your palm key to the front key. E flat to F. Add your um, side B flat to make it an F sharp. For the high G, you're going to flip flop these two. We're going we're gonna to lift this up and then put this one down. So your, for your G, it's going to be front key, um, side B flat, and your index finger of your right hand. And then for the A, just like we did earlier, we're gonna just add the side C key to that. And that's the piece. I mean, like I said, I didn't go through every single nuance of this, of this piece. And um, I'm just gonna go through kind of the little tricky bits um, and kind of, show you what I do for, for the fingerings there. So I hope you found this um, um, helpful. And if you did, let me know. And if you want to see any other pieces, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. You have a great day. Bye-bye.